Today I'm going to tell you about one of the rarest cigars from Oliva. This is a review of the Oliva M. Monticello. Hopefully that looks cool for the intro. Anyway, my friend Kyle reached out to me and was like, what's up? How you been? I was like, I've been good, moved into a new apartment and I'm working on my patio right now to get it set up so that I can do reviews. I was like, is there any review that you'd like me to do? He was like, yeah, dude, the Oliva M that I sent you. Anyway, this is it right now. And I'm excited for it because it's just, it is a rare cigar because I think that this is only released to Holtz Cigars. This is a little something from Holtz Cigars website describing this Oliva M Monticello. Discover one of the brand's rarest creations to date with Oliva Monticello. I guess that's how I was supposed to say it, not Oliva M Monticello, but you know, they got an Oliva V, so that was kind of tricky. Anyway, whatever. A superb medium to full bodied blend. Let's do that again. A superb medium to full bodied blend drafted from the company's oldest reserves of premium aged tobaccos. A dark and oily Nicaraguan Maduro wrapper embraces a supreme blend of Nicaraguan binder and filler tobaccos matured for maximum smoothness oh, yeah. in a collection of popular soft box press sizes. So this is, I guess this is a soft box press, yeah. But it really is very... I don't know, squished? <laughs> it's, it's squished. This is the Churchill size, by the way. Okay, let's, let's get back to the dramatic narration. Creamy notes of dark cocoa, cashew, and coffee bean accompany hints of cinnamon with a balanced spice before a stunning finish. Blesses the palate. Oh, Jesus. Bless it, Lord. Anyway, Oliva Monticello is meticulously handcrafted by the most experienced cigar rollers. That's interesting to note. So if this is really handcrafted by the most experienced cigar rollers in the Oliva factory, then I'm expecting this burn to be absolutely perfect. Anyway, let's get back to it. The most experienced cigar rollers at the company's factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. Add a rare and sought after gem from Oliva to your collection today. Supposedly the strength on this is going to be medium full. I'm gonna tell you whether or not I think that that's true. This is fully Nicaraguan, that's interesting. And the price of this Churchill size, at least on HoltzCigars.com, is $22. Shout out to you, Anthony, from Holtz. Before I end up getting into this cigar, I'm first going to make a cup of coffee. Let's get to that. I'm gonna use a mocha pot to make this coffee. Yeah, now I could use this Keurig right here to make the coffee. But that wouldn't be as YouTubery as making it with a mocha pot, so I'm gonna do that instead. If you've never had coffee out of a mocha pot, that's what this is right here. This is a mocha pot. And my friend Derek gave me this. I need to grab a cup, I'm gonna put some water in here, and you know what, I'm gonna use high quality H2O. And by that, I mean the H-E-B brand. I don't know if you're from Texas, but if you are, we got H-E-Bs out here. And that is the best grocery store in Texas. Okay. Yep, I'm going to open this up. Then I'm going to put this coffee in there like so. Two. Start. Look at that. Ooh, that's hot. All right, now I got my hot water. Whoo, that's hot. Ouch, God, that's hot, dang. But that's how I'm supposed to do it, like that. And then just give it a little shake. Whoo, that's hot. And I'm gonna twist this on there. Oh my God, that is hot. Okay. Ah, yes, and then I grab the coffee pot and I put it there like that. Oh, shoot! Okay, 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 okay. Ah. 
I don't know what just happened, but I'm supposed to take this off now. Ah, oh, dang it. This is what happens when you try to look cool for your friends. Golly. Okay, flip this around. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm going to put this back in the, here. Let's turn on the cold water. I'm supposed to do this. And then I'm supposed to do that. I wonder if I put too much water in it. I'm not going to lie. All I did was watch the tutorial for like 15 seconds of it and then just jumped right in. So that might have been the issue. If you know how to do this, let me know what I did wrong. Close enough. I've got to clean this mess up. Here, I've got a rag here. You are watching YouTube's finest, Memento Cigars, The Professional. I didn't expect this to turn out to be a parody of a professional video. <laughs> But I guess it is now. I wanted it to actually look like a real professional video for YouTube. Um, but apparently, apparently it's not going to be a professional video for YouTube. Now that I've got my hot cup of coffee. Oh yeah, that's good. That's really good stuff. Some questions I'm going to answer about this cigar is one, what would I rate the cigar? Two, is this cigar box worthy? And three, do I think that this is worth the $22 price tag with all things considered? Let's get into this. Me looking at this cigar right now, I see that there is beautiful construction. When you look at this wrapper leaf, there's some veins on this wrapper leaf, but they're not ugly veins. What I find strange about this is the fact that this looks like it's a double cap. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it looks like it's just two caps on this cigar, which is strange for this price point of $22. Anyway, this is the foot of the cigar. We'll get into this right now and we'll see whether this is worth the $22 and whether this, the hype around this being such a rare cigar is actually worthy of there being any hype, even though I don't know if there's any hype around this cigar at all. Maybe I'm creating the hype right now. So first things first, I am going to test the humidity in this. Let's see what this reads. We're at zero. Okay, so 62, that's pretty good. Now, let's cut this. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that cut. That's a really good cut right there. That's what you get to look at inside there. And now we're gonna toast it. Okay, let's see what this tastes like on light up. Actually, surprisingly, I'm getting pepper on light up on the retro hill. I got a nice blast of pepper. And on light up, it's I'm getting this subtle, like chalky chocolate, subtle type of chocolate with a wood profile underneath it. Mmm. Okay. Wow. So this is interesting. Yeah, you're getting pepper on light up for sure. You're getting black pepper on light up. I would probably say that this is about a four out of 10, maybe five out of 10. You also get some on your tongue too. On the palate, it's kind of tingling a little bit, kind of like a red pepper. You get pepper on the retro hill. Yeah, on the back of the throat, you're getting that black pepper. So on the retro hill, I get a very, very subtle leather with that pepper and some powdered chocolate because it's kind of got this chalkiness to the chocolate. Same thing on the palate. On the palate, I'm getting this spice, kind of like a red pepper tingle on the tongue. 
with some wood right now and this powdery type of chocolate. Overall, the texture is pretty chalky on the palette. I'm curious to see if this is really going to live up to the hype on the website. Uh, so far, the draw is impeccable. I mean, the draw on this is smooth as can be. Really kind of airy draw. There's not a lot of resistance. You take one puff, you don't have to take two puffs in order to get a nice full mouth of smoke. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah, but that's just light up. I'm gonna get more into the first third and we'll see if the Oliva Monticello is going to develop into something amazing or if it's just going to be a gimmick by calling it a rare cigar. Look at this, this is getting a little scraggly, this burn line right here. Uh, let me cover up my face. Yeah, you see that, but hey, that's a good sign because that means that this thing is gonna even out. I'm gonna set this down. Oh, look at that. You see the little guy just floating there? Oh, and we're gonna knock him off. Oh, shoot. Look at this nonsense. You see this? Oh, shoot. Whatever. Anyway, God, you try and be a professional and this is what happens. This is really good. Okay, so for those of you that care about facts about things like the name. I got curious about the name uh, Monticello because I was like, what on earth does this even mean? What is Monticello? So I looked it up and apparently Monticello is most famously associated with Thomas Jefferson's Virginia estate, Monticello, which he designed and built on a hilltop near Charlottesville, Virginia. Jefferson named it for its elevated setting and the estate is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site recognized for its historical and architectural significance. I don't even know what that, what UNESCO means and I'm not going to research it so you're not going to know what it means either. <laughs> Not sure if you could see smoke rings I just did, but I did them and I thought that that was kind of cool. And saying that I thought it was cool makes it even less cool. <laughs> now that I've gotten through this, the first third of this cigar, I'm gonna give you my initial thoughts and the notes that I've gotten from this so far. What I've experienced on this first third has been black pepper on light up for about a quarter of an inch. Pretty intense black pepper. I'm talking about like a five or a six of black pepper. On the retro hail through the first third, I've gotten this nice creamy, creamy cocoa with little hints of leather. And then on the palate, I've gotten wood. I would compare it more to like an oak rather than a cedar and a cashew. At first, it starts off more woody, but then as you continue smoking that cashew type of profile, because cashews are a little bit creamier of a nut, that ends up taking over the profile more. And then laid on top of that is that creamy cocoa. Now that the overall texture of the smoke is kind of chalky. I'm going to get into the second third. I'll let you know my thoughts on what I get out of the second third. I will say this about the ash on this cigar. This is not going to win you a longest ash competition. If I show you hovering over this ashtray, you see how little ash is on there and I can just tap on this and it's already falling off. Welcome to the second third. So as you can see, my burn line is getting weird, but what I will say about this cigar is I am confident that this burn line is going to even out. As I've smoked this, it's always gotten a little bit weird, just a little bit, and then it's evened out. So that's a testament to the construction that went into this cigar. Now, as far as the flavor profile is concerned, I am so grateful that I experienced the transition in the second third. On the second third, you're going to get this creamy cocoa, but then that kind of fades away. And what's introduced on the palate is this dark coffee, almost like this thick, dark coffee, um, kind of like an espresso. And you're also going to get some cinnamon, like a ground cinnamon 
incorporated into the flavor profile on the palate. Then on the retro hill, you're going to get that coffee and you're going to get a subtle sweetness. You're going to get hints of that chocolate. Same thing with on the palate, you're going to get hints of that chocolate, but it's very, very subtle. So it goes from being a more sweet cigar, not saying sweet like an infused cigar, but more sweet on the first third to a more bold flavor profile on the second third. You still get hints of that cashew on the palate on the second third, although I think that it's dominated by that coffee and the cinnamon. Really great smoke output, really perfect draw. This is the draw that I prefer. It's a draw that's similar to a Padron. I'm gonna take off this first band. It has two bands on it, boom. Took off the first one. And let's go ahead and take off the second one as well. The bands come off extremely easy. <clears throat> the bands come off extremely easily. Okay, so as I'm smoking this, I did more research on Thomas Jefferson's Boy. Monticello. And what I found out was Monticello was known for its tobacco crops. Monticello was a plantation and its cash crop was tobacco. So this makes all the sense now. You see, you thought you tuned in to get a review of this cigar, but you tuned in for a history lesson. I'm speaking facts here. This, you need to subscribe for this type of content. God, how amazing, how amazing. It makes total sense to me now. It makes total sense to me on why this is named Monticello. One more fun fact for your uh, library of facts. By the way, this and this last third is ramping up in strength. Okay, thank you for making it to the last third. On this last third, it's been interesting. I've experienced primarily just this dark roasted coffee with cinnamon, but also spice. And then on the retro hill, I've gotten loads of that dark coffee. The strength ramped up to something more close to full. I'm a little bit queasy in my stomach. Now, is this cigar worth the $22 price tag? I think that it's priced exactly right. My final rating came out to a 91. That's primarily due to the ash not being that strong of an ash. It's relatively soft and easily falls off. Um, the wrapper leaf wasn't absolutely flawless, so this is me nit nitpicking. And the overall aroma of this cigar is nothing special. The flavor of this cigar is above average. This is definitely an above average flavor profile. However, it's not exceptional. But I do think that this is worth buying. I think you could buy a box. This is box worthy. I don't think that you need to treat this on the same caliber as an Andalusian Bull or as an Opus X, any of the Opuses. As far as the rarity is concerned, it's not on par with those. I would love it if you would like this video, subscribe to the channel. If you've smoked this, tell me what you thought and tell me what flavors you got out of this. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching and thank you for being patient with me as I release content because I know it's been a really long time and I'll see you next time. Bye guys. <laughs>